Good morning, guys. This morning, it's all about the tomatoes. I have, oh, I've been working on them since about 6.30, just getting them skinned, but we're gonna make spaghetti sauce for the most part. I'll see if there's anything left over that maybe I'll turn into some pizza sauce. And it's gonna be a big day. Stay tuned, hang around with me. I'll give you updates on how it's going with um, Abigail being away at boot camp, our new foreign exchange daughter, Dan, and we'll just chit chat while I work on this. Oh, I'm gonna show you guys too, a really cool tool that I thought of while I was um, prepping these tomatoes. And if you have it around the house and you've never used it before, it's going to save your thumbs a little bit. But let's get these dunked and soaked. And I'll show you real quick. Okay, for example, you have your steamed tomato. This I got from Pampered Chef. It is a strawberry core is how they advertised it. And I've had it for, oh gosh, over 20 years. And it just pops out that little core bit. I thought like it was like I had only gotten like three through and I was gonna tear my thumbnail off trying to pull those out. I'm saving my peels for tomato powder. Isn't that handy dandy though? What I didn't fail to mention was I got about 50 pounds of tomatoes and you guys, they're all my own homegrown tomatoes. I've never ever done that before. And I've just been freezing them and bagging them um, as I brought them in till I had enough to process. Now I'm gonna just saute up some onions and you guys know I grew a ton of onions, but I really wanna keep those for storage. And I had this um, bag of frozen onions in the freezer and I need to give me, myself some freezer space. So I'm gonna use these. And um, I didn't grow any bell peppers, but thanks to Lisa Sutton over at Sutton's Days, two years ago at the Hootenanny, I won a whole bunch of Thrive Life um, dehydrated vegetables and fruits. And I'm gonna be using some of those bell peppers that I've rehydrated. So, we'll see if I can get this in there. Um, so this isn't gonna be like a how-to um, recipe, but I will leave the link in the description below. So if you guys are interested in what recipe I'm following, for home um, spaghetti sauce, I'll leave it there. And on my counter is all the cowboy candy I made. And just a tip, if you're doing cowboy candy and you've got a lot of leftover brine, can it as well and you can use it as a marinade um, for some yummy spicy dishes. So I'm gonna saute these up and I'll meet you guys back at the tomatoes. I'm back at the tomatoes, the onions and peppers are all sauteed down and I've reached capacity in my roasting pan. So I'm just chopping these up to see if I can make room for more. I'm only halfway through the tomatoes too. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a big bowl out and start processing the others. And as these cook down, I'll add to it. So let me tell you, last time you saw us, well, I guess it was the cabin, so it wasn't that long ago. But before that, we let you know that Abigail had left on the August 22nd to go out to Navy boot camp. And guys, it's been 16 days and I have not heard from my baby. <laughs> I didn't really expect anything until the second week, you know, the last few days. So every day I've been checking and checking the mailbox. One day 
I had a self-addressed envelope in there from her and I got so excited, ran back up to the house, opened it, and it was just like a form she had to fill out for graduation. No personal note. Oh, so I'm at my breaking point to hear from her. So I've been writing her letters every single day, getting them out um, as soon as I, well, that day that I got that letter was the first day I had her address. And I had like 11 or 12 staged letters ready to go to her, put those out in the mailbox the next day. So hopefully by now they will have reached her, I hope, and she will have a touch from home. Um, but we, uh, let me give you an update. Oh no, I won't do that. Anyway, Abigail, whenever you see this and you get out, know that your mama missed you like crazy and I can't wait to hear from you. And if you're not writing me on purpose, shame on you, write your mama. Oh, if you guys don't have a big roasting pan to do your big batch canning, go out and get one because for things like this and things like, you know, big batches of applesauce, whatever you salsa we do in here, um, it just is so nice to have this. And we got this secondhand at a resale shop, so you don't have to go and buy one online or at a store and spend a bunch of money. I think I paid 10 or $12 for this. And it's been wonderful to have. I will share a couple tips. I did a lot of research this year on spaghetti sauce. So just in case any of you are tempted to comment that, Rachel, why don't you just can tomatoes and then make your own spaghetti sauce? Well, as you know, Todd and I both work full time, or if you didn't know, we do. So, um, and I like convenient food. I like to be able to just go in the pantry and get what I need and make a meal. And I know that's probably not the best, but this is homegrown and homemade. So I feel like I've done some prep work in advance for easier dinner prep in the evening after we get off work. So I should, based on the recipe and based on the amount of tomatoes I have, get about 20 or so quarts, which will be uh, at least double that I did last year. And that was with buying a lot of tomatoes. So I'm super happy there's still a ton of tomatoes on the vine out there. But with those ones, um, they'll be going towards salsa with some of our cherry tomatoes. So, okay, well I just got through quartering them all up and I've made enough room that I can fit maybe another bag in at this time. Then we're gonna go ahead and get all the seasonings in and just start cooking it slow and low. And uh, yeah, it's gonna smell good in this house all day, but this is a really long process. So let me get to going on those other tomatoes and then we'll come back. Okay, I have gotten a whole bunch more tomatoes in here. I've added a ton of spices. Now I'm adding the peppers and onions, but stay, stick around just a second. I'm going to show you guys another ingredient I'm out of and I need to make some. Just one second, I'll show you. So this is all the brown sugar that I have left. I never ever buy brown sugar. I showed this one time, maybe last winter during a live show. But for those that don't go back and watch live shows, I thought I'd share it again. And we just have molasses and pure cane sugar. I'm just gonna add some molasses to my sugar and mix it in. And we'll have brown sugar. So while I'm mixing this up, let me tell you how exchange life is going. Um, it's going super, super well. We've had some funny cultural differences um, to get to know, you know, just know what's what's normal, what, um, when somebody says something, what does it mean? And uh, 
I think what we're learning, of course, as you might expect, is Vietnam's culture, for children especially, is there's still a great, great, great deal of respect for their elders, which I much appreciate out of Dan. Um, that maybe American children aren't, it's not as common, especially this level of respect. Um, so, and we raised our kids to be respectful, but uh, Dan is just amazingly so. One of the funniest things was um, she had a drink one evening for dinner and um, she asked Todd if she could pour it out. She was done with it. And he said, I don't care. And, uh, well, oh my gosh, that just about made her start to cry. And uh, she kind of looked at him a little bit later and was like, when you said I don't care, what did you mean? And he said, I just meant I don't care. And she went on to explain that in Vietnam, if you say I don't care to somebody, it truly means the worst of the worst. You don't care about them. Uh, they're, you're done with them. Uh, you know, get out of my life. You're nothing. And we were like, oh, no, sweetie. When we say I don't care, it just really means we don't have an opinion one way or the other on the subject. Pour it out if you don't want it or keep it and keep drinking it. Makes no never mind to us. And... So that's been funny. So a few times as we've been going throughout our days, I'll go, watch Dan. Hey, Todd, I don't care. <laughs> and because he asked like a question and I had no opinion of it. So that's been funny. And then um, she said another, look at that brown sugar. Wonderful. She said another cultural difference is um, the way that we show so much affection. Um, and I told her it might be different household to household, but affection is somewhat common in the United States that, you know, friends greet each other with hugs and kisses and you greet your family members with hugs and kisses. And, um, but it was more so the amount of affection that's in our home. Um, you know, Todd and I kiss when we get home, hug each other tightly, kiss before we go to bed, all of that. And, you know, we sit by each other and hold hands. And she said, um, you don't see that it, that as much in Vietnam. And so that's been a pleasant surprise to her. Uh, so we're filling her with lots of loves and hugs and kisses while she's here. So we're just so much enjoying Dan. She's a super sweetheart. Um, She's been at school now two days and said she loves high school. She's already made a bunch of friends, so that's been fun. I need to get some more basil in. I ran out, so thank goodness for stores. We're going to throw in the brown sugar, and then we're just going to let this cook down for a while um, until... until I can add more tomatoes. All right, I'll bring you guys back when we're about wrapping up. It might not even be today, depending on how long this takes to cook. I might see you guys again in the morning and we'll um, see how much we actually end up getting. Okay, so just in case I don't catch this in the video, last time I made spaghetti sauce, I just used tomatoes and the spices and stuff and, uh, you know, onions, garlic, all that good stuff. But as I did a lot of research prepping for what recipe do I want to use this year, because guys, here's a tip. Mark down every canning recipe you use because I loved last year's. So it turned out really, really good. We didn't buy spaghetti sauce all year long, um, which was a first for us. The year before that, it was still too acidic. Um, so I think I found a really good one, but the tip on from last year to this year that I wanna tell you guys about is I use straight tomatoes. And it takes a long time to cook that down to a spaghetti sauce consistency to get all that water out. 
This recipe, I am doubling it, calls for adding, um, there you go, uh, tomato paste. And I think that's gonna really stretch the recipe. So we're gonna do that and yeah, there's a tip for you. One more tip, stay tuned because this is uh, an old Italian grandma trick that somebody learned um, that I wanna share with you guys. Don't know if it's a wives tale, if it's gonna work, but we're gonna try it. All right guys, we are back. I've got all the seasons mixed in, the tomato paste mixed in, but I'm at capacity and I still have three gallon bags of tomatoes to add to this. And then I realized, guys, I only have an 18 quart roaster and this recipe is gonna make 20 quarts. So what I'm probably gonna do is just um, divide this off into, after it cooks down a bit, divide this off into a pot on the stove and then add tomatoes to both. But the last little ingredient that needs to go in is like four bay leaves. We're gonna bring this to a boil and um, take it back down to a simmer and let it cook. So then I'll take an immersion blender to it later. I'll bring you guys back when I do that and um, get this smooth. Okay, well I have all of the um, tomato skins now laid out. And I'm gonna turn on the dehydrator and get these going while the tomato sauce is cooking down. I did portion off, like I said I was going to do, um, some of the original tomato base and put it in a pot. And why isn't this looking on right now? I'm doing it upside down? Yeah. And got the last of the tomatoes in. There we go. So, I think after I added the batch of tomatoes, I guess it does still have to cook down. I was hoping I was gonna be able to squeeze out some pizza sauce out of this. I guess we'll be patient and we'll wait and see how much we actually get. Okay guys, I have, it's been probably three hours since we last talked. And this sauce has just been simmering away. I did go ahead and put the immersion blender in there and uh, got all the big chunks all mushed up and together. But it's that last old trick that I want to show you and I'm going to do that for about the last hour. Um, I went ahead and filled the water bath canner with water. That water's heating up. So as soon as this sits, 30, 30 minutes to an hour. I don't want, well let me just take you and show you what it is. So I've got just a bag of unprocessed carrots from the garden and they said to drop two carrots in the pot and what the carrots supposedly do is they are going to soak up some of the extra acidity. I'm gonna just throw one in for good measure. And we'll just let those sit. Rue, be quiet, I'm talking. We're gonna let those sit in here for the last 30 minutes to an hour. I'm gonna put a couple more in my other pot and then I'll bring you guys back when we jar it up. All right, I got the first batch out of the canner. We're working on the second batch. And you guys, I love the recipe. So again, I'm gonna leave the link in the description below. It's really, really good. And I can't tell, I mean, I was never that sensitive to the acidic taste of spaghetti sauce, so I can't tell if that carrot trick really did anything. Um, I didn't think it tasted very acidic when I put them in there but <clears throat> I guess Todd will be the judge because he's the one that's pretty picky about it. I see him pulling up in the driveway now from work. But guys, oh my gosh, look what came. I got my first letter from Abigail today. First sentence, mom, I haven't cried yet. <laughs> she's doing really, really good. Sounds like she's getting plenty of rest. Um, 
she she's funny so abigail loves her sleep and she said it was her first letter and mom all the other kids have been writing every night but you know i love my sleep so sounds like she's going right to bed as soon as she gets a chance and not staying up which i'm happy because that means she's trying to stay healthy and take care of herself but Anyway, I will come back and let you know 50 pounds of tomatoes using this recipe. How many quarts of spaghetti sauce did I get? It's going to take a while. These do process for a while in the water bath. Um, hopefully I can finish up because tonight we got the first football game with Dan. Okay guys, it is way later than I started. It's like 9.30 almost at night. Oops. And I just wrapped up the last processing of the spaghetti sauce. And like I mentioned, I was going to tell you guys, so how much do you get if you process 50 pounds of tomatoes using the recipe that I'm going to link in the description below? And I got 20 quarts, which is exactly what I was hoping for. One's a little shy, so I'll just make sure that we use that one first. And... Um, but we had a super fun time tonight taking Brie to her first um, American football game. And she had her very first funnel cake. So, yeah. Stick around. We got lots more coming in from the garden yet that we'll be processing here soon. Talk to you guys later.